All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, last time we left off on this page with all the uh, pictures on here. And uh, now we're on to uh, this page, right here. The RAF bomb German long-range guns, September 1940. Attack on German coastal guns. The big German guns that bombarded Dover and British... Uh, 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 oh, boy. British convoys in the channel were regularly subjected to an event, intense bombardment by both the RAF and long-range oh guns on the British coast. The enemy uh, emplacements were cunningly camouflaged and strongly guarded by anti-aircraft guns, which were put up a fierce barrage whenever British planes appeared. Above, below, bomb and shell damage in a French coastal town that was unfortunate enough to harbor a big Bertha. So here we see those guns firing, uh, doing their best to uh, fight off the British planes, anti-aircraft guns. And when you think of anti-aircraft guns nowadays, a lot of us would assume flak. Obviously, you can see here, uh, this is not quite flak. <laughs> this is more... Uh, basically putting a giant um, rifle in the air and trying to shoot the dang things out of the air like you're bird hunting. So that's why flak is so well, because uh, flak is kind of like bird shot. Very similar. And then here we see that French coastal town that was unfortunately destroyed. Um, hopefully civilians made it out. Any French civilians that were still in, in town. Um, and any... German civilians that could have been there. Um, I won't say... Obviously, the soldiers, it, it is unfortunate if they did pass. So, but... The invasion ports get a going over. September 15th, 18th, 1940. The thwarting the invasion menace. Funny Mustache Man's repeated threats to invade Britain remained threats, uh, yet thanks in large measure, uh, no doubt, to the good work put in by the British bombers, uh, while, the, while their brothers of the fighter command battled against the enemy raiders, the skies above Britain, all right, uh, in the skies above Britain, Oh, man, I am so lost. This guy's above Britain. They flew across to the French, Dutch, and Belgian ports almost nightly to upset the result of German day's work. Uh, special attention was paid uh, to troop-carrying barges, which lay ready for a swoop on the English coast. The British official photograph. This British official photograph shows the dock area at Dunkirk, where many of the invasion barges were were concentrated. After a visit from the Royal Air Force, damaged, bar damaged barges can be seen near the entrance to the upper uh, dock. The warehouse surrounding it completely destroyed, while two big buildings facing uh, the other dock have been demolished and the center one gutted. The wharves and sidings are pitted with bomb craters. So here we see all the barges down there, just obliterated. Uh... And here's that building next to the first dock here. Then just completely destroyed. This building, these two buildings, this one's been completely obliterated, it looks like. And this one's just uh, got some ma major damage, but not complete destruction. Yeah, it would make sense. Destroy. Uh, it makes sense for them to try to go to Dunkirk. I mean, they took it, so... And it's, a, it's relatively close to Britain, so... But yeah, destroy everything you can at the ports. Uh, try to slow the Germans down as much as possible in hopes that maybe they'll just give up on the invasion idea. Oh boy. British fighter pilots shot down 185 Nono German soldier raiders over Britain. September 15th, 1940. Uh, Britain's aerial Trafalgar. September 15th marked the climax of the Battle of Britain. On that day, 
500 German planes, uh, German aircraft, I should say, uh, 250 in the morning and 250 in the afternoon, made the most determined attempt to reach London. Spitfires and hurricanes that went up to intercept the enemy broke up the raiding formations, and the battle developed into a series of running fights. By the end of the day, British pilots had accounted for 185 enemy planes, and unofficial estimates raised the Nono German loss to 232. Uh, British losses were 25 planes, 13 of whose pilots were saved. This picture shows a hurricane giving a victorious sweep over the relics of its victim, a Heinkel uh, 111 bomber, shot down in one of the encounters of the day. So here we see that plane all the way right there. And there's the German plane that's been obliterated. And he, he, he's just going over like, we did it, boys. I shot him down. <laughs> uh, German bombers uh, tackled by the RAF. The picture above, taken from fighters by camera arranged to operate simultaneously with the firing of the plane's guns, show the German raiders looked to the British pilot's... Uh, Met sent up to intercept them. Top part at the approaching formation of Heinkel 11, uh, 111s, center left Heinkel's amid a rain bullets, center right a Dornier at close range, bottom a Heinkel on the edge of an intense field of fire. So here we see this is the top picture. It's an approaching formation of Heinkel 111s. Which, that's, that's so many planes. Like, we don't have... It's hard to think, like, you know, 500 planes. 250 in the morning and 250 at night. Even, even that. 250 planes. That's so many planes. It's, like, an, it's a crazy number. Like, one that we can't really, like... You can think about, like, oh, I've seen, like, a jumbo jet. Or I've seen, like, multiple planes in an airfield. But you've never seen 250 planes all right on top of each other. It's crazy. Here, um, off to the left here, is a um, Heinkels uh, amid a rain of bullets. So we see those Heinkels surviving that rain of bullets. Off to the right, a Dornier at close range, which that means that they were right on top of this. So right before they, would, that right before they were about to fire, it's, it's right there. And then here we see... Another Heinkel on the edge of intense field of fire. These pictures are cool, but they almost look fake. You know what I mean? Because, like, the dark ones, you can see, like, the lines where the bullets were going. Um, but they look like paint lines almost. And even here, it looks like it looks all painted. This looks all painted. But it's not. It's a real photo. It just looks so off. We're not used to seeing photos that way. Um, South African Air Force raids Abyssinia. Uh, Abyssinia? Abyssinia, I think, actually, is how they pronounce that. Uh, September 1940. Attacking Italy's African Empire. Large-scale air attacks on Italy's possessions in Somaliland, Eritrea, and Abyss uh, Abyssinia of, by South African and British airmen were continuous during September. Much damage was done to the Djibouti Adias Ababa Railway, and countless hits were scored on an airfield and other military objectives. In the picture, a dense column of smoke is seen rising from a Caproni bomber, Caproni bomber set on fire by a bomb at one of the air one of these airfields. A hangar beside the column of smoke was destroyed by two direct hits. So here we see. I'll zoom in a lot more. So there's an air raid shelter. That's where the um, crew, uh, anyone would hide if they were to be attacked. There's a motor transport. And this one was destroyed by subsequent hits, as it says. Here we see an AA gun emplacement right here. Um, the hangar, uh, which is 2,250 2, pounds, uh, direct hit, not on fire. And we can see kind of the destruction there. It's not on fire, but you can definitely tell it's been 
hit. The Caproni uh, 133 on fire, which is this one right here. It's You can see it in the blaze. That's a very, very clear blaze. There's another air raid shelter. Obviously, these are far apart, and that's so that uh, whichever one you're closer to, you'll go to. So, like, uh, you know, anyone over here, I'll run over here. Anyone over here, I'll run in here. And then here is another AA gun and placement, but there's no gun there, which seems not very helpful. If you're going to have an AA gun in placement, probably should have an AA gun there. Uh, the De Gaulle Expedition to Dancourt, September 23rd to 25th, 1940. Free French off West. Africa. General Charles de Gaulle, leader of the Free French, arrived off Dakar on September 23rd with small naval and military forces. Or force. Uh, he hoped to enlist the support of the colony against the Vichy government's policy of cooperation with Germany and persuade it to rally to the Free French standard. Uh, British ships stood by but de Gaulle's attempt at a peaceful landing was resisted, and after two days, he decided to withdraw rather than cause a fight between Frenchmen. British ships came into action, and two submarines were attacked, which attacked them, sunk, were sunk. The picture shows above Charles de Gaulle conferring with his officers before the withdrawal, below French officers uh, putting off to meet the French government or governor generals. The launch was fired on during this it during its journey. So here we go, there's De Gaulle, and obviously he's posed for this picture, you can kind of tell. But yeah, here's him with all of his generals deciding what should we do, man. And here's this, and like they said, they were fired upon, going to meet them. And yeah, the some of the colonies would, were loyal to France because the idea was well, Vichy France. Well, the idea was, you know, well, what happens if you guys lose and we resisted? Well, then we're going to get major repercussions. So, which is understandable. They don't want to be, uh, they don't want to get repercussions and potentially end up in a place where they could die. But, all right. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys liked the video? leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. And tell me what I can improve on. Um, it's always a good thing to hear some constructive criticism. And as always, subscribe. It really is a great help. Thank you.